Wow. Jeez. Whoa, whoa. That's way to it. But I've lost. Mushy. Honestly, I am past caring. I've just realised I haven't actually spoke to the camera yet, so here I am. How's it going? Anyways, uh, last night, myself and Mushy, we walked in to Glen Peen Buffet, got there about half nine at night. Didn't do any filming, just enjoyed the fire, a couple of whiskies, got a good chat with me, uh, Mushy there. And this morning we left, just after seven, because we're doing two Rocky Mountains in Glen Desiree. And we're just about to reach the summit of Carn Moor. There's Mr. Mushy at the summit before me. Hello, folks. How's it going, mate? Very good, very good. Congratulations, first Ronnie Corbett together. Yeah. Magic. Check this out, by the way. What's that lock? Is that lock Moor? It will be, won't it? Is it Moor or Mona? Is it deepest in Scotland? Yeah, so we've got a cracking view of the deepest loch in Scotland and possibly the, probably the deepest lake in Britain. Right. Well, we're coming down this ridge because what we're doing, some people will drop directly down straight back up again, but you're negotiating crags and it's steep and it's hellery and boggy. And it just takes a lot of time and effort. So we're coming down the ridge, lose a bit of height first, then drop into the glen, then up the ridge of the second corbett well, of course, we've just come to a bit of a roadblock here. What's you thinking? Is it looking alright that side? Ish. 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 I'll take ish. <laughs> oh. It's an interesting rock. You didn't want to straddle it. No. Uh, at force. A gentle saddle, maybe. Right, this here, folks, is our second peak of the day. This is Abidian Shavar, I think you pronounce it. We're just looking for a safe route off the ridge. I think we're going to go down here. It looks doable on the map. There's a stream, maybe about 100 metres down, that we can pick up, handrail the stream down to the valley floor, and then we need to look at our route up the bad boy here, because it's a biggie, it's rocks everywhere. This, folks, is taking a while. We're just slowly picking our way down these steep grassy slopes. A couple of minor slides, so really just trying to be careful here. It's pretty steep. How did you get down off this, mate? Um, bomb slid. <laughs> it just looked wet and horrible. I, I tried to be dignified, but it didn't work. I'm gonna do what you've done then. Just I Pro javelin thrower right there. 10 out of 10. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ah, it's wet as anything. Uh huh. Wet's on the skin deep. You're gonna put it here. Whoa! Spongy. I cleared the path for you. Uh, <laughs> I think you did. Uh, well done. <laughs> we are back down to 
a lofty altitude of 200 metres. That's over 600 metres of ascent to go. We've already done 850. Jeez Louise. Just looking at it now, like, we came down that, really? Because you can see the, the top bit. It came round and down. Ah, uh, that was the ish bit. Ah, uh, it was the ish bit, uh, Ish. It um, looks even more ish from here. Just beyond Mushy there. This is going to be a route up here. And we'll get up onto the ridge beyond those crags. Well, after nearly seven hours from leaving the buffet, we are so close to just topping out on this ridge. It'll be a short walk up to the summit. But laid out in front of me, I can see the route that we did this morning. I'll just go through it with you quickly. So here's the summit here. We came along this ridge here and then down this big grassy gully. Basically handrailing that stream right down to the valley floor. And then you can see we just pretty much came straight up here. Wow folks, we're just about on the ridge and look at this, it is quite intimidating. It has uh, got a presence about it, that's for sure. Skurnakesh is looking rather fine and mighty from this angle. You don't get quite the same conical shape but nevertheless, it's a rocky beast because of course we are in the rough bounds the rough bounds pretty much stretch from Noida in the north through Glendessery and down into Moida which is just a little bit further south and all these hills all have this very similar character very rocky and rugged the rough bounds this would be a cool camping spot if you find a pitch. When you're approaching the summit, it looks quite intimidating, like it's almost impenetrable. There is a short, easy scramble just up the front of the nose. What we've done is we took a little bypass path round the back and then just up to the summit. So we're almost there. Woo! <laughs> wow, jeez. What a hell. What a viewpoint. It was what amazing. a hell. What a view. What a day. What an uncomfortable seat. Well, that summit was fantastic. Some of the views were tremendous. It was good to pick out some of the Cape Raft Trail as well. So now we're heading off. We're doing the sort of more book route for this hill because we came up a different direction and then we're going on this big knobbly ridge. There's no straight lines, it's just weaving in and out of rock and bog and whatnot. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be here if the cloud dropped. The terrain is just so complex. I mean, look at that behind me. Super boss. Well, that's just been going 10 hours now and I am shattered. It's been one of my biggest days for a long time. We've still got a bit to go before we get back to the car. Our next step is to get into this woodland it's just uh, below me at the moment. Uh, once we get there, at least it's a path, then a good track out. So uh, it's not all bad. But yeah, I am goosed. Whew. It's just keeps on going and going. I 
Right, I've almost hit the the forestry line, but I've lost mushy. And uh, normally I wouldn't go in the woods without Kevin or with somebody else, but I suppose that's what happens uh, if you don't know each other quite as well. So uh, I should pick him up at the path, but I thought he might have waited. But nah, there's no sign of him. Bad form. Uh, aye, it looks quite dense, so I'm going to have to try and pick up this path on my Jack Jones. Well, this is a bit of a shit finish to the day, and I've still got a bit to go. I hate plantations. Ow. Jeez, oh, where's this path? Come on. You think you're alright and then your foot just sinks. Honestly, I am past Karen. Oh, God's sake. I think I'm onto the right path now. Still no sign of Mushy though. Absolute no clue where he's gone. There's bike stashed. It's not the nicest of tracks, this. It's been churned up by the, the forestry plant machinery and it's just really chewed up at some points. This little bridge here, reminiscent of the Cape Raft Trail. Good times. I know I talk about it a lot, but it was just a fantastic two, three weeks of my life that I'll never forget. So uh, yeah, I just like to reminisce when I come across parts of the trail on my on my hiking trips. It's been a good wee while since uh, I got out of those woods. Uh, nobody has cycled past me yet and I've not seen Mushy up ahead. I've stopped for a bit, nobody's came from behind so I don't know if he's ahead of me or if he's behind me and I suppose I probably won't find out until I get back to the car what the situation is. <laughs> so uh, I've got another I don't know, six kilometres maybe to back to the car, I've not measured it yet, but uh, yeah, I've still to pass a cool boffy as well, which is on this route. I'm not stopping though, I'm just going to keep pinging on in case mush is ahead of me. Well, 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 what do we have here? It is the lesser spotted, pink hatted, mushy, sitting waiting on me on the rock. Well folks, that's a happy ending, being reunited with mushy. And I'm just marching on back to the car. Six kilometres still to go, so I'm going to sign out for now, but I'll catch you next one. Cheers. Ta-da.